Hey, thank you for clicking on the video. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. This is my boiler. It's so old that when I call the company and I tell them the serial number and I tell them the series number, they have a hard time finding paperwork on this boiler. Ever since using this boiler, it's always popped and done what is known as kettling. It may have a lot of scale build up inside. We're going to be flushing it out. We're going to be replacing the expansion tank as well. I tried to see if I could get air pressure from it and I tested it with a gauge. I was unable to build pressure inside of it and when I knock on it, it sounds like it's full of water. So I don't believe that the air pocket is still there. If it's there, I believe it's compromised. When I spoke with the manufacturer on the phone, they told me of a couple products that I could run through the system. They mentioned the Sentinel 400. It's not really something I'm interested in doing. A little unsure about adding chemicals to the system to do that. If you know anything about that, or you've done it on your system, please do leave a comment below. I'm not a boiler technician. This is a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but I'm gonna take a stab at it. This might not be the right way to do it, but I'm gonna try my best and hopefully resolve some issues that I'm finding within my system. One problem that I'm noticing with my system is the pressure gauge is reading right around maybe four or five PSI. I'd like to get that a little bit higher. This new expansion tank comes pre-charged at 12 PSI. See if we can resolve this, see if I can make the kettling get a little bit better. I reached out to Amtroll today regarding their fill troll valve down here. This is the older style. Everything I could find online was speaking to the newer revised model. And I was able to talk to someone on the phone who was aware of the horizontal mounted expansion tank for this. Basically, he said nowadays they're putting expansion tanks to be mounted vertically. They say that that's better for the diaphragm. He said that I could still put my expansion tank on horizontally, but it may reduce the lifespan. I'm aware of that. We're going to go with it. This is the pressure gauge before doing any work. Diaphragm in the expansion tank needs to be working in order for the pressure reducing valve to function properly. I'm hoping that that's part of my problem with the low pressure in my system. And I'm hoping that the low pressure is actually part of the kettling. I really hope that the kettling gets lessened or goes away from replacing this. I got my replacement expansion tank from supplyhouse.com. I've actually had a lot of good luck ordering through these guys. They have great products on their website. It's definitely worth checking out. Good prices and pretty quick shipping. I've ordered from them several times. Never had an issue. And there's the replacement. That'll do just fine there. I'll set that there. One thing I'm a little worried about is I really don't have anything to grab onto here with a wrench or anything to loosen this up. So we're gonna see how well this wants to come out. Basically, the new one, it's just an O-ring that seals it. I don't believe I need any tape or dope. I'm gonna shut the system off. The other videos online said it's a good idea to wait, let the temperature drop, let everything cool off before working with it. Sounds like a good idea, because this water is very hot. Got that one. And then we'll do the supply. And then we'll do the other side of the loop, shut it all down. I know, this is, probably should have done a new boiler valve too, would have been a good idea. Just like that, I was able to get it off with my hands. 
Wow. All right, we gotta be ready to go with this new one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out, put the new one in, got the O-ring seal there. Let that water heat cool down a little bit better. And just like that, I'd say we're good. Well, now we're gonna flush the system out real well. I gotta do something. Next time I turn this system off, I'll put a new boiler valve. I don't think I have one. I'll just keep reefing down. One day it's gonna fail. Ooh, just ate up that gasket, didn't it? Now I'm gonna flush the system out, so I'm gonna go up here, get my hose on this one. What is going on in here? Well, buddy, I'm trying to work on the boiler. So now we're going to flush the system out. What I'm going to do now is open back up the supply line. And we're going to flush through the actual boiler. See if I can flush some of that nasty out of it. That's pretty gross. Now I'm manually operating each zone. We have the upstairs zone and then the basement zone. These valves are open. Currently I have the basement shut off. We're flushing off the uh, upstairs loop. These are fun to replace. I've done both of these already. They're the uh, White Rogers zone valves pretty much plug and play they like they uh, quarter turn onto those brass and they kind of lock in I believe you see that clip on the back they lock in there so I think one of them failed and was dripping and then one of them was stuck in the closed position they're about hundred and fifteen dollars hundred and twenty five dollars at least I only have two of them some of these homes you see you know they have six or seven zones and that's that could get costly. And I'm gonna go around once I'm done and I'm gonna tighten up the packing nuts on all these valves because they never get used. But today I'm using them, I'm flushing it out, so it's a good idea to just tighten up these packings when you're done. If you ever have a drippy valve too, I always just tighten them up a little bit. Gotta be careful. Old things like to break. And then tighten them a little bit not too aggressive. You could use a crescent wrench, that's probably a little better honestly. Channel locks like to mar things up. Okay, so we're still flushing out the system. I'm gonna begin closing this boiler drain and we're gonna watch that gauge. Now if you remember what the gauge was doing before, it was staying right where it's at right now. We're gonna start turning it.
We got pressure. We got pressure in the system now. We're right around 10 PSI. I wonder if the system will operate better. I don't think it's been 10 PSI as long as I've been using this heater. So I'm really hoping that this helps the kettling. I'm about ready to fire this bad boy back up. Just fired it back up. You can actually hear the system calling for fresh water going through the filtro valve down there. Got some jobs I gotta add to my list. I wanna replace this boiler drain and I wanna replace this boiler drain at some point. I had to tape the heck out of these caps. It's always something. I know it's old, but I still like to wipe these down. Keep them clean. I do the water heater too whenever I come through. You know, people say double check for leaks. I'm a I'm a triple checker. You know, you can never be too sure. So yeah. Amtro filtro valve tank supply system shut off. And inside of it, it's got the pressure reducing valve. Yeah, so this is my Well McLean. Is that how you say it? I'll pop it open for you. Here we go. Well McLean. 15 PSI. It's a PCG number 3, series number 7. It's so old that they don't have a lot of documentation regarding this model, so it's kind of uh, hit or miss what you can and can't do, but I keep tinkering and hopefully what I did today helps. I got the pressure up, so I think it's going to be running better. I got to purge the air and uh, purge the air and hopefully we can resolve some of the kettling. Maybe I need to flush it out more. The person I spoke to on the phone from Well McLean, he was recommending that product, that Sentinel 400. I don't know if he was recommending it, but he said it's an option. Well, I got a spring check, I got a one-way valve, and I got a pressure-reducing valve there. Uh, they're all so old, I don't really want to put chemicals. I got good drinking water right here. I don't really want to put chemicals in a system that's only protected by these three valves. And they're all old, so who knows how functioning they are. Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about that. I don't think I'm going to do it unless I had a better form of backflow prevention. That's where I'm at. Now I really wanted to make this video because my boiler is so old and because the filtro valve is so old that there's not a lot of content about this on the internet. I was having a hard time trying to figure out exactly what to do if it wasn't for the great customer service at Amtrol and the great customer service from Well McLean. I probably would have been stumped on this one, but I was able to talk to those guys and try to get an idea for what may be going on. What, what else I could really do, or if anything else was possibly the problem. So in the description, I'm going to leave a phone number for both of those companies. If you have the same setup, or if you have something similar with the same manufacturers, you can give their customer service line a call and talk to a technician who could maybe help you walk through something that you're dealing with. I just wanted to create this content for entertainment for you, really to see my system, what I'm doing for it. Maybe I did something wrong. If you saw something that was like, yeah, I really wouldn't have done it that way, I would have done it this way, please do comment it below. I'm trying to get the most life that I can out of this boiler. I want it to be running as best as possible. If you have any tips or comments, please do leave them below. I will read them, I will answer them when I can, and hopefully together we can all learn a little bit more about our boilers and our heaters, and possibly this video will help someone, but like I say, I'm not a certified technician, so this is not advice. This is just me doing something on my own at my house. If you aren't competent, definitely call a technician. Call someone who's licensed in your area to take care of the problem. I'm just bleeding off any excess air with the, uh, the air vent valve here. 
Well, I'm all set now. I'm going to come on down and bleed the air out next couple of days. Make sure that the air is getting out of the system. Well, thank you for watching the video. If you could, please hit that thumbs up button. That does help YouTube to place us just a little bit higher. Take care and have a nice day.